so. America probably wonders who I am. Well, I'm here. This is the person I am. This is the person I'll always be. This is the person I've always been. I'm no different from the person I am now to the person I'll be later when I'm older. I'll grow up. My voice will change slightly. I'll keep on aging. My body will grow. More aches and pains will come. And I'll have to endure. Simple as that. Who I am doesn't matter. It's who I represent. I represent this mask. This is who I am. Because I like to cover my face. It's so I don't have to show my face. It's so I don't have to show my identity. It's so I can conceal myself. Who is thinking while I'm thinking? I'm not a happy person. My mom was talking to me today. She says, are you a happy person? She said that before. She said that to me once. I didn't listen. I'm extremely closed minded when it comes to my personality, when it comes to my emotions. I'm emotional, but I'm in control. I don't like emotions. I have them in control, not locked, but I do close myself. I become closed minded when I have to present attitude towards an opposing thought. Something that says, like my mother said to me. This, this is not my son. You're right. It's not your son. It's your eldest son. The eldest you have. Not the son you had when he was four. Not when he was five. Or six. Not when he grew up to be ten or eleven. Not when he reached fifteen. Not when he turned seventeen. And then wished to be eighteen. Not when he got work. And started turning into a man. Not when he worked the fields. And did the labor. Of a hard man's life. Not the workforce. Not the worker of the workforce. That we call America. American. I am American. Yeah. But what I'm not. Is I'm not happy. I'm not a happy person. I try to calm my eyes. Soothe my thoughts. And a little simple. At peace. I have to realize I have to look at that flag. Then I find I remember something I used to salute to. A salute to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which we stand, one nation under God. Indivisible for liberties and justice for all. And then my oath. I pledge to be a citizen of the United States. I pledge to vow and to follow all laws and to the order of all tenants and all obediences. That must be sent down to the citizenship of the value to a U.S. citizen in the United States. I must know my country honorably, thoroughly, and in depth, so that I might be part of it and adjust to all its changes, to all amendments of my own name, to all amendments of the creation, and God vows and God do that God may protect this world, that God knows our nation to be great, that is a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And that if there is no justice, then we must come in, and we must have a tribunal against all our leaders, leaders, pricks, thinking while I'm thinking, against all our leaders, against all our thoughts, against all the nations that we know to be evil and great, turn against them. That's what we should do. But when it comes to the thoughts that you think are natural, natural order doesn't present itself as evil. Natural order presents itself as thriving, good, as prosperity, as wisdom, as humble, as kind, as peaceful, as all-knowing. Not cocky, but it is all-knowing. Because it wants to learn. Educated, thoughtful, presented, always presented, on a daily basis. Reviewed, thought about, kindly, expressed. 
and built to the emotions of personality within each individual state membership and each individual state citizen and each individual state continuity to the continents which thrive around it and to the continent which it belongs, which is America, founded here by Cristóbal Colón. <sighs> Long before I ever existed, that's for sure. But down to the 19th century and the early 20th century, which is my century now, we're in the 20th century. And we moved on. We're in the 20th to the 23rd century. The 20th to the 23rd year of this century. And we had to think how far have we gotten since the 19th century? Not too far. Since the 19th century, we played, we warred, we found no peace. Come. Corrupt, found no arrogance, found hatred. It's the words we would lie to. We lied to say we have no arrogance. We found greater arrogance than ever before. We like to think that we're perfect, but we lack desire to know. We are self-righteous and not dealt by God and our nation that is protected by God, which is a nation under God, as so says the founding fathers of our constitution. The Constitution is to be burned at this point. People burn the flag. They represent communities that are foreign, domestic, or that are terrorists altogether. Terrorist organizations that thrive on the thoughts of being evil. These are people that we don't represent, don't like. I have found myself thinking to sometimes, why God? Why did I find myself in this position where I have to be myself and I have to change my ways and I have to be so angered by the nations I lived for? Once upon a time, my father raised me thinking the thoughts that this world was evil and that you must follow the ways of a corrupt individual because he's our leader. But don't stray away from yourself. You have to be yourself and you have to be an individual and independent because if not, you'll be nobody. And nobody in this land that makes nothing and does not survive and dies quickly. Well, then I always listened to those words, and I always stated the name. I am nobody, and I am no one in this land. I am nobody, and I am no one in this land. I am nobody, and I am no one in this land. And that's what I was always told, too, an expression of discipline to my thoughts. I was told that I was nobody. It's true. I worked so hard to be nobody. I was uneducated. And we needed education. My father was told us, don't lack education. Find education. Be educated. So that you'll have knowledge in your mind. That's not the only thing he told me. He told me, if you can thrive off the works of this land, which are entertainment, and those works that are visible for people to see and make most money, entertainment, television, music, radio, those things make money. Politics makes money. Law makes money. Science doesn't always make money. I'm a scientist. I'm an engineer. I'm an architect. I'm educated. So those values, those are my favorite values. Being an engineer of all aspects. An architect of my work. <sighs> a teacher even. I like to teach. I like to express myself to other people so they may know what I know. And they may one day learn what I learned. I always thought to myself, when will I be an adult? When will I grow up and be like my father? Obviously never, never, because I'm not like my father, I'm different. And then I thought to myself, well then, if I'm not like my father, what am I like? And I said to myself, since I'm not like my father, most likely I'm like my mother. He's an angry and he expressed himself and say, well you're like your mother. And I say, I'm like my mother. And he says, yes, you're like your mother. You cry a lot. You complain a lot. You don't follow the orders. You don't do what I tell you. You're more like your mother. You're emotional. I remember one time I was asleep and I was just resting. I wasn't asleep. He passed by and says, that child sleeps like a girl. What an insult for a man to hear. <laughs> then he told me in the bus, in the car, my life, that was a van. Going to work on a summer vacation. Hurt my feelings. He said... If I could just remember. He said, uh, stop acting like a little girl. I said, what? What am I doing? And he says, the sound of your voice. That's what you're doing. I said, oh, the sound of my voice. Sorry. 
I didn't know. He didn't know. And I didn't know. Who knew? I don't know. I just talked. That's it. I was born to speak. Through the sound of my voice, should I know and hear my voice? Know how I speak? I don't know. But I spoke. And I spoke aloud to myself and happily and joyous, as well as thriving goodness and kindness in my heart and willing to work and learn. By four years old, I was insulted by the fact that I was knowledgeable enough to know that my father worked hard. Knowledgeable to know that my father worked on technologies, board strips, electrical currents, outlets, break boxes, appliances, industrial grade, commercial grade, things of those sort. And I used to see these works and I used to think, wow, the works at hand, they're marvelous, amazing. And so I moved to his room. I said, let me in. Aside from the fact that we're speaking about our government today. I moved to his room and I said, well, my father governs his house. And I want to be like my father when I grow up. We should all be indoctrinated to a world that accepts us and makes us good. Good enough is good enough. Good is good enough. And I entered the room, moved my own bed without permission, of course. I didn't know. I didn't know better. I didn't ask. I enter the room and I go into the room and I tell my dad when I wake up, good morning. I don't sound like I sound now. I sound more like this. I sound more like this, honestly. This is how I used to sound. This is how I grew up the sound. I don't complain about my voice, but I, I always tried to hide my voice. So I always concealed my voice because the speech and the talk we had was hard. It made me cry. He said to me, don't speak like that, because you sound like a little girl. Speak like a man, because you're a young man, and one day you'll be a man. And I don't want any homosexuals in my home. Something like that is what he said. I didn't understand that at the time. But I knew it was an insult, and it broke my heart. After the fact that before and after I moved into the room, he moved away and locked himself in another room. I made sure the door was closed and no one could come in. I got a room of my own, he said. It's about time he gets his own room. He can't be living with the girls. Or he's going to turn out to be like a girl. So I moved out of the room. Naturally, I was happy. Except I didn't want to be like a girl. I wanted to be like my dad. I wanted to be like my father. So I looked at all the technologies he has. And watch them all just strip away. I wanted to learn it quickly. At a young age like he did. He told the story when he was young. But I saw the time I had to dive. I learned how to swim from my father. Partially. And the other parts I learned on my own. Trial and error. He was taught by the U.S. Army how to dive in Panama. There was a career choice in Panama at the time by the U.S. Army. and He was to be a diver. A combat diver. Not even the combat divers that were surrounded by my father. My father's ego and his personality, his entity, his life, his existence could handle who he was. He's a great man. And he thrives off the poverty of this world. But he exists and he survives. And he works harder than most people I know. But I know hard workers, because the people I've come in touch with have always been hard workers. So, I spoke to my father, and I said to him, why are you leaving? He says, because I need a room of my own. This stuff is dangerous and you can get hurt. I need space, I need to work. I can't work with you in the way. I said, but I won't get in the way. He says, I can't, sorry. So he leaves me, and that breaks my heart. The reasons why I'm the person I am, why I'm always so angry. <laughs> it's probably because I, I don't ever enjoy being left out, or turned away, or told that I don't fit in, or told that I'm not like somebody. 
Or maybe it's because it's a gender association that bugs me the most. So, I deal with those problems. It's not my lack of strength, that's for sure. Anyways, so I dealt with the fact that my dad is moving on. He is moving on without me. He didn't want my help at the time. So I grew up, he always asked me, come to work, come to work. Every summer vacation, every spring break, every winter break, come to work. And after feeling that my heart been torn out of my body and that it's been stabbed plentiful so many times that it had to burst and bleed out. That I just feel a hollow space inside of me, a gap where my soul should be. And that's the day I failed to be myself. I failed to be the person I was supposed to be. I was supposed to be more educated, smarter than I am. But since the day I chose to be who I was supposed to be, was turned away, like I've been turned away before. I'm a terrorist, it's true. I'll never be part of your combat controller community. I'll never be a civil as I should be. I'll never be a SEAL. I'll never be Marsox or a Marine. Not Force Recon. I won't be a cop. I won't be a soldier. I won't be a firefighter. I'll commit acts of terror when I want to. If I find it according. But I'll be civil, political, peaceful, adequate, and of course adequate. But in comparison to greatness. Not good. Great. Even better. Perfect. Because God made me. God made me the same like you. But I'm not like you. I'm different. God made me. God made men. God made women. Men and women made children. God made plenty. Men made war. It's probably the choice of color I chose today. That bugs people the most. It should bug them. Because this is what people look like in the end. When they thrived. The land that wants to fulfill their death. So soon. That they don't get a chance to breathe. Once their mouth and limbs and every form of their face. And structure that lives to breathe and die. Is torn apart. I wasn't accepted. I remember the day it happened. I was in Civil Air Patrol and I'm guessing, well, I'll be accepted. I'm excited. Extremely excited. I know I kind of smell. At the time, I was having problems with my life. My health was deteriorating. Guess what? So was everyone else's. Slowly and steadily. It's like we were all chosen and selected specifically. Maybe by God. Or maybe by the order of a species or entity or existence. Of a disease, a known virus that wants to exist and coexist with us. And we are its host. We are to feed it and it has to thrive from our bodies. Man made. Like AIDS. Like Chimera. Like smallpox. And the fucked up things of this life have to exist with us because man made war. And they made biological warfare too. I'm a cell, but I'm not a terror cell. I'm not a sleeper cell. I'm a splinter cell. I'm a carrier. The fucked up world that exists within me. Because I accept it. Because I'm a gardener. I'm a landscaper. I should have and should have died from malaria a long time ago. But I haven't. Look at my eyes. I don't look so peaceful, do I? I'm not a peaceful person. Everything that exists within me, the parasites, it's children, it's seed, I'm the host of a 
several countless viruses, man-made and airborne. You can't say life of a virus can't be airborne if it lives within a host. You can't say that the life of a disease won't spread by the breath or by the exhale of my nose. You can't say that by the gaps of my eyes and the gaps of my ears, the pores that foul my head, the hairs that fall out, the dust that touches me and wants to continue on won't contaminate another. That's the fucked up world that was perfect once. It's a fucked up world because it'll kill you. God says that animal will kill. It'll kill. And it must thrive, it'll thrive. And it must torture and retard, it'll do so. Look at me. How old am I? 29 years since I was 17. And I've been in the deep jungles of Panama. I know the fucked up water that exists there. I know the rain that's contaminated and fouled. I know the products of every fucking world that go through there from China to Russia to India to every motherfucker that wants to go to the Antarctic and come back. That's a fucked seaman, that's a fisherman. I'm the Sam Fisher. I'm the real Sam Fisher. I'm the motherfucker that says I'm Samuel. That's my call sign. It's not Archangel. It's Samuel. Not Samuel. Samuel. The proper name. Samuel. I'm Lucifer. I'm the fucking devil. And you, you're the heathen, the blasphemer, and the whore. I'm celibate. I don't fuck for fun. I don't fuck for pleasure. I don't fuck to be at peace. And I don't fuck to be at war. I don't think those thoughts, but I'm provoked to do so. It's a fuck nation that wants to spread their cancer and give it to me. I'd have to be diseased until I entered your fucking home. I'd have to be fucked until I entered your community. And I'd have to be the black community that didn't get sick by me and I didn't get sick by them. It's a fuck world that says I was sick from the beginning, but I wasn't that sick. you ever heard of gangrene? Have you ever had to drink prison water? Water from Alcatraz is contaminated by the fuck people that don't know what the fuck they are anymore because they're either zombies, drug addicts, or they're motherfucking AIDS itself. AIDS is just a word that expresses the tone and thought that I'll give you help. Do you like help? Do you need help, human? Go ahead. Play with your blood. Play with the sections that fall down to the microscopic areas. And the areas that were time dated to eugenics. And before that, the feast of blood. And the thought that by bestiality and the thought I consume this animal to make myself great, I'll become great again. No, you won't. You become disgusting. You become a savage. You become feral, diseased. A monster that wants to live and thrive amongst people. You're not people anymore. You're a fucking cannibal. Fuck your nation. Fuck you because God never gave us blood or meat to feast. Give us the garden. Those of us who know how to live and clean our palates and live off the bitter taste of her fucking vegetable that I don't like and I have to eat it because I'm fucked. Too much foul my body and now I'm sensitive to everything that's meat. Everything that's grain, everything that's sugar, carb, I can't have it. But look at me. I still retain my strength as I can and could. Because I tried hard to exist in this world. And you're going to tell me I don't fit in. Maybe you don't fit in. Maybe you're the fucking cause. Maybe you're the section of the world that I don't like. Maybe your wartime efforts are ruining everything. Maybe I should just find a way to destroy you. Five times too many. And move on to the sixth, and then the seventh, and then the eighth. By the times I have two hands too many, and I have two hands cut off, and all the fingers limbed and delimbed by my body. Fuck you. I know your thoughts.
once upon a time, I was good. Good enough to exist amongst you. Once upon a time, I was a friend. And once upon a time, I didn't fear war. Because I didn't know war. Now I know war in my body. I know war in my life, in my existence. And I have to live with you. Friend. Neighbor. Fathers and mothers, I don't judge. Nor my elders. Because you come from a world that lived in hardship. And I have to respect you, no matter what. Even my senior citizens must be respected. But those of my generation, I don't like them. I don't fucking like you. Don't talk. I wasn't accepted. I just came a little too close and at the time and the moment to file in line, somebody says, don't sit next to me. Don't talk to me. Don't stand next to me. I'll kill you. I'm only 16 years old. Why do I have to die at this age? your throat and I'll rip out your jugular. I'll take your spine and I'll feast off it like a fucking cannibal. I'll make you cooked and I'll make you flesh to eat. Fuck you because I'll murder and if I starve then I'll kill you to eat and you'll die. I'll kill first. from my father and I carried it in me like a belt belonged to the military it doesn't have a holster I have a belt the grooves of that gun lock into my belt and the triggers underneath the system that's a belt simple as that can you reach the trigger no you can't it's blocked it's covered can you pull out my gun it's jammed isn't it you really have to use it don't you no you don't I'll leave it there it's holstered and that's how you learn to carry. Don't touch it. Carry it. That's your job. Put it there. Don't touch it. That's your first job in recruitment. I'm the recruitment officer. This is my war. Not yours. Mine. I'm warring against the world. And if I can, one day it'll be a world war. Because I'm angry. I'm more angry than all of you. The seniors are too arrogant. And the elders are ready to die. Me. I'm ready to live, and I'm ready to die for what I believe. What do you believe in? Money, honor, sex, pay, hours made in the day. This is the tarnish of the thought that you think that I'm wasted and waistline to the fact that I'm too thin. Or maybe my hips are curved and my spine is plenty arched to look like a woman. Then I am a woman. And if I'm not, then I'm a man. Because this is my voice, naturally. 
This is end. And this concludes this video. I hope you all have a nice day. I wish you the best for the rest of your lives.